So we have one more problem on rotational dynamics. And this is a car wheel. And this car wheel has three brake pads, one here, one here, and one here. Now these brake pads apply force in this manner. Now you can clearly see the net force applied by the brake pads is zero. But um, uh, but uh, there is torque which is being which can be provided by the brake pads. And let's say this guy is moving in this direction. So if you apply brakes, it's going to slow down the car. Okay. The question is, if the surface between the tire and the road is r is rough, which it is actually, and has a friction coefficient of 0.3, what can we the maximum F such that tire does not skid, right? So what do we understand from this? This car is moving with some velocity, we don't care, but if we apply brakes, it starts decelerating. We give it a deceleration. Let's say this, we, the deceleration we provide is A. And the way we provide this deceler deceleration A is by applying the, the brake. And this is how the brakes pad ad, uh, act. They do not provide any force, any net force on the car, but they do provide a net torque on the car. So, so the question is that uh, how, what should be this, wh what can be the maximum force that can be applied so that the car does not start skidding? We have seen that um, sometimes cars start skidding. Uh, you, you, you should have noticed that. And this is the reason why cars, cars start skidding. Okay, so let's calculate. So first of all, let's say, let's see, let's see what happens here. Let's say we are already acting on F max. And let's say what happens if you let this go to f max. That is, it's already f max. Oh, there's one more thing we should have specified. The normal reaction from the road is coming. Uh, is is uh, the normal reaction provided by the road is uh, two thousand newtons. Well, let's make it actually eight thousand newtons. So the normal reaction provided by the road is 8,000 newtons. Okay. So, and we draw the third force also. So if we want to give it the maximum acceleration, the friction should be acting at the maximum value, which means the friction. So now we have to decelerate this. So the only way you can decelerate this is by providing a by applying brake and the brake acts in such a manner that the friction stops the car. It's the friction that is going to stop the car. The friction is going to act on the um, on the tire and is going to stop the car. There is no other force other than friction that can accelerate or decelerate the car. So if you are accelerating, if you want to accelerate, the friction acts forward. And if you want to decelerate, for at least for car, the friction acts backward. Let's say this is the motion. This may be a little confusing for you, but if you give it a thought, the reason we are able to walk is that when we walk, the friction is actually in this direction. We press the ground backward, and the, f and the ground pushes us forward, you, uh, the, the friction force, and that's why the whole body moves. You need a force to move things. So friction is the force that provides the motion. Similarly here, we, we did apply the brakes, but who is going to provide the force to, to, to let the car decelerate? Well, it's the friction that is going to provide the force. So let's say it's the friction, Fr, that is going to act. But then what is the maximum value of Fr that can be possible? So it's 8,000 multiplied by 0.3. And that gives us 2,400 newtons. That is the best friction can do. Okay, if this is what friction can provide, and let's, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's say the mass of the field is m, 
we're not going to use it, but let's say it's m. Then, how much deceleration, how much acceleration or deceleration can it provide? It's going to be 2400 divided by uh, uh, m. Okay, so this is the linear deceleration, but this should also match with the angular deceleration. If the guy decelerates a, then it should also have a angular deceleration alpha, which should be same as alpha times the radius r, right? Okay, but also we know that alpha times r is going to be equal to, uh, well, we also know that that alpha is going to be equal to torque, I alpha equal to torque. Okay, so we have two equations. This is the first one and this is the second one. So let's calculate alpha from here. So if we calculate alpha, it turns out to be F R. There are three forces, so 3 F R divided by alpha, which is going to be M R squared divided by 2. So 2 goes in the numerator. And alpha R turns out to be 3 F, or in fact 6 F, so there's a 2 divided by m. But this alpha r should be equal to acceleration. So that gives me 2400 divided by m equals 6f divided by m. And that gives me, m is not used, f equals 400 newtons. Right? So just to recapitulate what, what went on here, again we just made free body diagrams and, ri and wrote Newton's equation. Uh, this is the Newton's equation for force and this is the Newton's equation for torque and then we solved it. So we, um, okay, uh, so, so that's, the, that's the moral of the story. We always have to make free body diagram, write Newton's equation in terms of acceleration write Newton's equation in terms of angular acceleration and then solve it.